Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Knocked Conscious. I'm here with Andrew Fisher of Nature of Reality Radio. He, is, he has some amazing thoughts and ideas about things, and he wants to share them with everybody. I was on his podcast, I think it was my second interview I've ever done, so he was so gracious to allow me to share my story, I wanted to share his. Hey, Andrew, are you over there? Yes, I am. And Welcome. I Oh, I heard the word welcome in my ears. That was a nice uh, introduction there. So uh, I uh, have great difficulty understanding the nature of reality. That is why I am the host of Nature of Reality Radio. Albert Einstein once said, don't worry about your difficulties understanding mathematics. I can assure you that mine are still greater. I likewise would say, don't worry about your difficulties understanding the nature of reality. I can assure you that mine are still greater. Therefore, I am the host of the show, and therefore, I have interviewed a whole slew of people over the course of time on my show as guests. It's gone through some ups and downs Nature of Reality Radio has. I first started on Blog Talk Radio. I got the inspiration to do the show from Greg Prescott of In5D at the, uh, well, I called in the show several times, gave great information. He told me I should have my own show. It was when I went to his conference in Sarasota, Florida in um, October 2012 or September 2012, some, no, 2013, excuse me, um, when, yeah, October 2013, when I decided officially that I was going to be doing a radio show, and uh, I guess the Quartz Crystal Sand on that beach really had some magic to it, and uh, <laughs> well, uh, Sean Margaret Cohen, who was my first ever guest on the show, she actually, six months before I started the show, said, we're going to see big things from you, Andrew, in about six months. And, well, that came to fruition. And, um, well, it's been a, a great uh, show for getting out information. I've done a great job, I'm sure, when it comes to getting things out that needs to be heard. I, uh, I've i been uh, told that my selective memory is, uh, or photographic memory, or selective and photographic memory, is a blessing for this radio show, as it allows for me to be able to talk about things with guests that many other people would not be able to talk about in great detail and bring up different sides of issues in ways that other people wouldn't. And uh, when I first started doing this show on Blog Talk Radio, I had the old habit of um, bad habit of telling guests that at the end of the show that I probably wouldn't be interviewing them again because I want to make a mission out of getting a different guest on every single show as possible. And well, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but then again, some might say it's rude to say that. So I eventually stopped doing that when I left Blog Talk Radio, and that's a whole new can of worm, worms <laughs> in and of itself regarding Capricorn Radio when I was invited by Edward James Swagger to uh, do Capricorn Radio. And I came on his show, did a few shows. I inter interviewed the guy to talk about Megalus, and he seemed like a pretty intelligent guy. And well, all of a sudden, just one day, Capricorn Radio went defunct and he disappeared off the face of the earth. And then he wasn't talking to anybody. And then when he reappeared, he wasn't answering me or, or anybody else. So I don't know what he was trying to do regarding stealing my shows or anybody else's shows on Capricorn Radio at that time. Wow. But ever since then, I've been a stray radio host in distress for all intents and purposes, doing Skype to Skype pre-records with the show dot and it's not interactive with the guests but uh it's to be not interactive with audience members i can only interact with audience members through comments on youtube and i archive all my shows on blogger as well and uh on facebook as well i have a facebook group too for for it but um it has not been uh something that i've been able to get a full-time job out of. I had a Kashuk Records reader, Andrew Bartzis, in a session that I did with him in December of 2017, suggests that I should look into quitting my nine-to-five day job working as a clerk in my mother's ophthalmology office and start marketing my my radio show. Of course, that's easy for him to say. <laughs> I mean, he's, a, he's got the Akashic Record reading skills, and he can easily charge someone a week's paycheck to sit with them for an hour to answer unverifiable questions about their life and, and anything else. Yeah, for I, sure. I don't have that luxury. And um, 
of course, uh, Andrew Bartzis and uh, David Icke and some others have recently um, gotten under a little bit of uh, scrutiny for their claim that uh, the way the world is uh, changing is um, not changing in a way that we're led to believe is changing, but I think they're trying to downplay what's really going on. We've all heard about the whole global currency reset and the Sar Jassar RV thing where um, the dollar is going to be um, switched over to a um, gold-backed currency, the end of the Roman Empire, the modern era that is the United States of America, mm-hmm. and everything is going to uh, is going to be better for humanity with new technology release that's going to keep people from being impoverished and and whatnot. And it's uh, going to lead to a 10 to 15 year period, maybe where humanity will eventually be able to transition to, to no money at all. See, it sounds like wishful thinking, but if the vibrational energies of the earth are increasing and increasing and increasing, and David Icke said that they were increasing, increasing, increasing in his um, talk at, at Wembley in October, 2012, which I did see live and in person, then it stands to reason that that is what's going to happen in the future. And the best thing about it is, well, the best advice I can give, don't become a couch potato because it's, uh, it, it may happen. And that's why people like Andrew Bartzis and David Icke are probably downplaying it and saying it's just a psyop and a way to make people uh, sit on their butts and do nothing and be apathetic and think, come and save me. The white horse is going to come and save me and do all the work for me. When in reality, that's uh, not the way it it's meant to be. We all need to do our part at an individual level. If more people at an individual level do their part to speed up the process, then it'll wake up humanity faster. And this whole um, dreamland that we want to create on Earth, where we're no longer slaves to the to the system of domination and control, can be put to bed, and we will all be able to live freely and more enjoyably and hopefully get out to other places on the cosmic scale. I've done a lot of research in my time regarding the uh, the conspiracies and the nature of reality regarding books, uh, documentaries and such. I've watched all of David Icke's nine hour talks. I've read many very thick tomes like Bloodlines of the Illuminati, Tragedy and Hope and uh, three of David Icke's books and just bought his book, The Answer, which um, is uh, gonna come out soon, pre-ordered it. And I don't know what the exact question is to that the book is going to answer, but um, while there's probably going to be some preaching to the choir, I'm sure that I've already heard. I'm sure there's going to be other stuff that he did not cover before. And uh, it should be noted, though, that in this time of love and great awakening, people should not focus so much on fear and negativity as much as they as they used to and i have been very critical of people like alex jones and david like for that reason because they insist on following a if it bleeds it leads attitude and <laughs> a little nihilistic always, possibly or yeah and always yeah. uh getting out the negative stuff to uh try to get publicity and and attention and all that when in in all likelihood, they would probably be speeding up the rate of ascension of humanity better if they didn't talk about that stuff as much as they did. But if they want to do that because they see it as a way of getting rid of every weak link in humanity's chain, then that's perfectly acceptable. And I myself have done a lot at the uh, political level regarding getting the weak links in Donald Trump's chains Um exposed when i went to some trump rallies in the recent recent weeks i tried to explain to people that donald trump the man while he wants to be a good president and do what jfk did before he got his brains blown out and also do what andrew jackson old hickory did when he uh killed the bank and was those were the last words old hickory said on his deathbed allegedly and um i didn't know that yeah, that's what he wants to uh he wants to do what Andrew Jackson did, kill the bank and yeah, it's uh the banks are trying to rub it in our face as a form of mockery putting Andrew Jackson's uh face on the the twenty dollar bill. That was a way of saying, Yeah, he killed us, but we're back and we're gonna show you um we're gonna try to rule you and this is our way of showing that we don't care about what happened in the past and well, Donald Trump did merge the Federal Reserve 
and the treasury into one, which um, some might say that's a consolidation of power, but others would say, no, 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 it's not a negative, it's a positive thing, because by doing that, he is trying to make it so that we can switch to the uh, to the new system, the new system of per gold-backed currency and no more loaning money that doesn't exist and charging us interest on it, which is the way that the banks have enslaved humanity throughout the course of history. Interestingly, it has also been pointed out that Trump had did some uh, rehashing around the White House. He took down some portraits of um, Bill Clinton and one of the George Bushes, not sure which one off the top of my head, but he took down Clinton and Bush and he replaced them with the portraits of William McKinley and Theodore Roosevelt. What's interesting about that, William McKinley, now this is a 1900, nobody's alive at, from then at this um, time period, except for some people that uh, maybe really spiritually enhanced their living in caves and all, but uh, <laughs> the, um, it, the as far as records go, nobody from that time period is alive now, but that time period, 1900, when William McKinley became the... Um, American president, he uh, got America on the gold standard. Right. And he um, wanted to try to do things to make America more prosperous and all. And um, there were some forces that were trying to enhance American imperialism at the same time, though. And William McKinley didn't really want to go along with it. It is not a known fact whether or not the guy that killed William McKinley, his name is Leon Cholgosh. Um, some Polish immigrant. They said that he was brainwashed by Emma Goldberg to want to kill Trump because he was an anarchist, and anarchist means different things then than it does now. Yeah, it does. And yeah, and uh, he was designed to kill Donald Trump, uh, excuse me, kill um, William McKinley because um, he was upset, Cholgosh was, that so many people in America were living in prosperity while so many uh, were living in poverty. And he didn't like that. Well, in all likelihood, Cholgosh was probably a mind-controlled patsy who was um, put under the thumb of the bankers who had him uh, shoot Willie McKinley at that fair in uh, Buffalo, New York, I believe it was, at around the um, 100 years before 9-11, interestingly. That attestation of Willie McKinley happened 100 years before uh, 9-11. On, Not um, to the day, was it? It not wasn't the, like something not, was passed. Not, not, not the day, but um, the okay. time that William McKinley was in the hospital a um, hundred years before the anniversary of 9-11, and he died right. a few days after that. So cycles of time standpoint, it makes you wonder what's up with that. And Yeah, well, COVID um, is, you know, a hundred years removed from Spanish flu, right? 1919. So it's really interesting about the hundred years in general. Yes, it is. And, um, of course, after... Uh, McKinley died, Theodore Roosevelt became president, and a lot of people seem to think that Theodore Roosevelt was a good man, but in all seriousness, having his face on Mount Rushmore is a travesty. He did a lot of things at a domestic level that can be considered domestic imperialism, putting the national parks under the control of the governments, when in reality, the fact that the people created the government means that the people are the ones who are supposed to have the control over the land and anything yeah. that is government property is property for the people and anybody with any shred of common sense knows that the collective authority of a group cannot exceed the authority of any individual that group means that if um the collective authority of government cannot exceed the authority of any individual in the general public therefore if Nobody in the general public has authority to punish me for my actions unless I harm or intend to cause harm to another through either negligence or deliberate intent. Then nobody in government should have authority to do the same. But after the um, Roosevelt presidency, things drastically changed and uh, America went on a downward spiral with the uh, Federal Reserve Bank. Um, I think the process of it starting happened in 1909 and it was 1913 when it officially became intact and also the uh, the income tax became in effect and the whole uh, 16th Amendment story about how that's a, that, that's a law that never was passed properly and even if it was passed properly it cannot be construed to to mean that americans have to pay taxes on 
domestic income because, uh, well, I'm just going to make it simple. Read David Champion's book, Income Tax, Shattering the Myths, and you'll get the the truth on that one. The, could I could I ask you a quick question about something you said earlier? Yeah. You said we're going to go back to gold-backed currency. Is that correct? Well, that's the idea, or that's the, I think. the idea. Okay. So my question was, are we eventually switching to zero currency needed or to like a digital currency? Because the transition to digital currency concerns me a little bit. If it was like a no monetary system, we're all covered, but we still all contribute. That's a different kind of conversation, right? Well, yes. If there is no cash, there are fundamental implications for freedom. Because if you can only use a credit card, uh, then and you can't you don't have cash on hand to use as a substitute, then well, there's a big problem, and we actually are having a a coin shortage in America at the moment, where yeah. so many coins. I mean, where did all the coins go? They they must be somewhere. They were all minted. <laughs> what are people doing with them? Where did they stash them? I mean, are they all in? I think they're melting bags? down the pennies for the money because it's more they're valuable melting. than each penny is. Yeah, exactly. There was a 1962, I believe, is the year that the um pennies were before then they were 90 percent copper so mm -hmm. in theory you could melt down, melt down coin pennies made in 1962 um into into metal uh, liquid copper and you can profit much more than the amount of uh, pennies total that you uh had to make to to do that with and same thing would be true with the uh the pound sterling in the British example, the pound sterling was called a pound sterling because, well, sterling silver, 92.5% right. uh, silver. Uh, and the um, if you could uh, get all these pound sterling coins and convert them into silver, you could uh, probably get more money than you would with the value of the coins at face value that they were on the, um, the numbers on the screen. Because money, as we know, it is just numbers on a screen, be it a right. digital screen or a paper a screen like a dollar bill note and uh well things are supposed to change and there's a lot of uh hype over cryptocurrency and i have created some cryptocurrency accounts but i haven't actually bought any cryptocurrency i just created the accounts for if the time comes for it to be useful then maybe it's worth um looking into the argument though about bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is that it's better to use it as an investment and a store of value and not as a medium of exchange um, because of the router and the, the science behind why the router makes it a bad medium of exchange. It's, it's kind of complicated and never yeah. something I need to get into. But um, I actually invested in some Bitcoin. I've got uh, not huge accounts, but I think I've got Bitstamp and uh, uh, what's the other one? Cat, uh, gosh, darn it. Coinbase, I think, are my two. So I, I definitely have a little bit in there, but you know, it's still very new and still, you know, the decentralization of it with the government trying to take it and kind of take it under their wing. You're sitting there going, the point of it is that it's decentralized, right? Exactly. And uh, society changed to a great extent in 1971. Mike Maloney gave a fascinating presentation. Mike Maloney of GoldSilver.com. He lives in Puerto Rico. He I watch his videos often. He gave out a fascinating presentation about how the world has changed since 1971 when we underwent what is known as the Nixon shock, when the U.S. dollar's convertibility to gold was officially made dead. It was no longer possible to convert uh, the dollar into gold yeah, after the Nixon shock of 1971. And the Mike Mullen showed that the way the economies have changed since then, it's done nothing but make the rich richer and the poor poorer and anybody who watched Mike Maloney's presentation could say that the Nixon shock decision of converting the dollar into non-gold uh, getting the dollars of convertibility to gold getting rid of it can be described in one word stupid unfortunately <laughs> because so many stupid I think it's a two two words but yeah yes but <laughs> unfortunately because so many people on planet earth who are alive today have um, lived um, since 1971 under the thumb of the Nixon shock. It's hard for people to envision a society whereby we can have some sort of a currency that's backed by gold or silver. 
And uh, it's funny that I'm having this conversation with you. I, before having the show, I was getting in an argument with my dear sweet mom and papa about how I wanted to convert all my IRA and 401k money into gold and silver. My, uh, I was kind of born with not a silver spoon in my mouth, but a copper spoon in my mouth with a parents that made a lot of money. My mother's an ophthalmologist. And my dad was in the TI tech industry and they, uh, always got a lot to, for me, but I learned over the course of time that it's better not to be a spoiled brat. You got to learn to have what you got and it's good to save your money and always uh, fight for the little guy. And well, unfortunately it seems that I've come to a point where my dear sweet mom and papa who think they know best are actually trying to put me in a death and emptiness standpoint. And that's not me talking. That's actually a Feng Shui um, <laughs> document that I printed out talking for the year 2020, where it actually said that the monkey and the rooster, which are my father and mother's Chinese zodiac uh, signs respectively, will put death and emptiness into your life. I'm a well, tiger. My mom's a monkey, I think, too. She's born yeah. 44. So yeah. I think, is it 12 years? So was, was your mom 32 or 44? She was. No, my mother was 57. 50 oh okay. wow so yeah. i thought okay my mom had kids late so <laughs> she's a rooster she's a rooster, my she's kid. A rooster. She's a rooster. yeah she's the rooster and yeah my monkeys my father is the monkey of 1956 and those are the signs that um seem to put death and emptiness in my life in 2020 and how fitting that i have this argument with my my folks now saying that i don't want my ira and 401k money um being in dollars now i want it to be converted into into gold and silver. Now they've actually, my father has actually threatened me for lack of a better word and told me that if I were to do that, he's not going to donate me any more money to um, my 401k and IRA. Um, if I were to convert all the money and um, I kind so of think, why, why would he be like that in this particular case? He just thinks it's not a sound investment. Yeah. He seems to think that, um, he's just um in love with paper money that's not backed by anything and he yeah. like i said is uh lived under the thumb of the nixon shock as has my mother so they don't seem to understand and make sense of this and i tried to send them that uh, video of that mike maloney explained how society has um only taken a turn for the worst since the nixon shock of 71 and and they haven't had a chance to watch it and i don't even think they are going to watch it and my biggest concern about this is basically the idea of when you have like a, a contest where you have those contests where they say, when you hear the magic word, call in the number and right. you better be sure that you call in the right number um, as soon as possible because other people are going to be calling in the number at the same time. Well, we're gonna run on the, the bank, right? Kind of, yeah. kind of thought. Yeah. Yeah. If the dollar is converted to, to gold or silverback currency and everybody makes the switch if i slack off and don't time it right then that was really like i'm sorry all the gold and silver has been bought by everybody that in decided to invest in it before you when the currency reset happens so you're out of luck and yeah that's kind of the pickle that i'm in right now with having um folks who just want don't want me to to convert my hard-earned money into gold and silver and well, hopefully well, they also don't Angel understand it, right? I mean, let's, you know, you mentioned an Einstein quote for your nature of reality, right? I, I've, yeah. got, I've got one too is, you know, the problems of the previous generations can't be fixed with the consciousness that created it, right? That's one of his big ones too is the consciousness needed to get us out of what we got ourselves into has to be different than what the consciousness was that got us into the mess. Very, very fitting. And, um, being that they haven't seen anything other than, that's another thing they if i don't see it i don't believe it well yeah. just well the material i mean my parents were both born in 1940 and 44 in germany during world war ii so they you know you could call them hoarders like if you go back to my house where you and i grew up the garage is just full of stuff and it's because they didn't have anything back then so they they're not greedy but they are material right because they believe in manufacturing and all those types of things
Well, uh, hoarding, that is that a healthy thing? Some people say hoarding is an addiction, but right. if you're hoarding and keeping a close eye on the expiration dates of the things that you're hoarding so you know when they're going to expire and you know that you're going to use them in the future before the expiration date, then I don't think that's a necessarily bad thing to do. And I've and done I don't blame him for that, right? I mean, he had nothing growing up. I mean, they walked hand in hand with his family from Hamburg to Berlin, for example, in like 1940 something during the war, you know? So it's like, I understand his psychology behind it. You know what I mean? Yes. And my uh, maternal grandparents, they grew up during the um, horrors of the war on both the side of the aggressor and the victim. My grandfather. And the oppressor, yeah. My grandfather he grew up in Poland. He was um, there when Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland and started the Second World War in uh, 1939. And he said, well, right side, I don't have to go to school. But on the uh, downside, it's uh, really terrifying to see that all these uh, soldiers are invading my country. And my grandmother, she lived in uh, Germany throughout the uh, course of the war. And Interestingly, she said that Adolf Hitler, say what you want about him, when it came to economics, he was actually a pretty decent politician, so much so that the bankers tried to kill him at least once. And wow. he wanted to, um, uh, yeah, he wanted to make gold back currency so that the government would not succumb to the bankers. And um, as a result of that, they they tried to, to murder him on at least one occasion and all this stuff about um, – him being an evil man who wants to kill the Jews. Well, he was evil. He didn't want to kill the Jews. But when it came to economics, um, he actually seemed to know what he was doing. And that seems to raise another question of how on planet Earth can we best manage our resources when we live in a system where money exists? Because Alex Collier has been saying for years that planet Earth is the only civilization in the Milky Way galaxy that uses money. And how really? can you, yeah, how can you hear that wow. and not think, well, it's time for us to join the club and get rid of money and join the the proper way of doing trade and barter and exchange things. And what well, the problem is, there are forces that don't want that to happen. Well, debt, forces... debt is the best way to, to keep you enslaved, right? So you have a house mortgage and you have a car payment and all these other things. Uh, what's interesting is this. I have a question about that. So did civilizations transition the way we are? Did they have currency at one point and then kind of got through the enlightenment portion or woke up or, or, you know, transitioned to not doing it? Or did they always never have currency as an issue? Well, as the story goes, there was um, a barter system where people would exchange things and, Oh, the problem was certain people would not want to exchange certain things because they didn't feel that that was um, they needed that compared to the things that the person wanted to trade them with. So it was um, they, they had to come up with some system whereby people could actually uh, give something instead of trading things, give something that would allow for them to obtain what they needed. So as a result, money was created and therefore they created um, gold backed money. But of course, the bankers eventually realized that they could make a profit charging interest on loans right. and loaning money that doesn't exist. And ever since then, that's how society has been uh, has come to the wrath of um, of the banks and all. And so many people are so cognitively dissonant about this that they don't worry about it. And well, it is something that people need to worry about. It needs to be changed and. It really does disturb me that people like my own two parents are so like in love with money that they seem to want to want this to keep going because they want to be slaves to a system because they they lived uh, so well with all the money that they've had and they think everything's going well when they could they don't seem to care about the fact that there's technologies out there that could be released that would allow for everybody who's starving to stop starving and yeah. you could desalinate the oceans and provide water for, for everybody. And uh, of course the problem with this is people are, if this all comes out as true, is it really going to be something that people can handle? Akashic records reader, Andrew Bartz one of his most um, prominent um, 
insights that he gives out. He gives out insights in emails and I read them every time he does. One of the more prominent ones was the future with a question mark after the future when he explained how you want to know what things are going to be like in the future, how we can manage in a system where there is no money and things can be um, exposed that will shut down the system of domination and control and let us live in harmony. Well, he actually said that in a timeline genocide on another timeline in 2004, there, that happened where basically all the technologies were released and the um, media and the uh, governments, they said, yeah, the ancient astronaut theorists and the conspiracy theorists, they were right all along. You have no choice but to believe they were right because the evidence shows it and we're showing it to you. But unfortunately, society fell apart because people could not handle the trauma of the shock that happened as a result of all that being put up to them and realizing they've been lied to for so long. Can I ask and, you a question about that? Yeah. So, so you said 2004. So that's on another timeline, another dimension, I'm assuming, correct? Yes. Okay. So right now we're in 2020 and the Pentagon just released a statement that they have vehicles not from this earth. And they're slowly trickling this out, right? If you've noticed the last few years, is it more strategic? Is that extra 16 years in this dimension going to help us possibly uh, understand that transition? Or is it still possibly going to be just a shock, as much of a shock? Yeah, th this thing you mentioned about the um, the Pentagon saying craft not of this earth, um, it's bothering me that some news organizations like InfoWars haven't actually put anything on their um, – media about it i would expect that they and that's would. alex I, jones right yeah uh, I, Force, yeah Al alex jones he tries to stick with uh, down earth stories you can prove but he is a little bit of a space buff he is I, I, I admire him yeah i, I like his open i just like his thought process i mean i yeah. find him interesting and fascinating just like i find you just the just to have the uh, ability to just go expand your mind you know just to have these thoughts i mean some people are incapable of even you know, getting there or don't even understand that they, you know, don't understand why or whatnot, you know, they're limited, not necessarily their fault, but uh, they're limited sometimes. Exactly. And well, why he decided not to um, put that out in his um, specific um, news uh, platform, I don't know, but it would have been nice if he did, but the Pentagon did uh, say that stuff. And it's great that they're saying this stuff, but at the same time, it does kind of disturb me to hear that uh, so many people that are white hats that want to expose the the um, technologies that have been suppressed and um, arrest the, the bad guys that have been suppressing um, things that are hindering our consciousness, they feel, unfortunately, that humanity can't handle the truth. And because of that, they try to trickle things down slowly and progressively being someone who can handle the truth, I find that to be ridiculous, and I, I can only imagine what, how people would react. But is it really? I mean, do you actually think people are going to commit suicide because all this technology is released? I don't think that would make any sense. I, right. It's but, not War of the Worlds here. I mean, it's not like the radio program dropped a bomb on people who who don't have like computers in their hands, right? I mean, let's be honest, the technology has come very far uh, since something like that. So the shock, I think, would be reduced, but it sounds like this other timeline in 2004, it, it did turn chaotic. It did turn chaotic. Society fell apart. People stopped living their lives. It was basically like uh, come to work, please. Uh, why should I come to work when there's technology out there that would make my job obsolete? That's, it was something, I'm sure it was something like that to some extent. Mm. And that was a timeline genocide on another timeline in 2004 in one of uh, Andrew Bartz's his, um, uh, things that he, that he sends out. And I frequently make reference to that to try to it's... give humanity a nice kick in the pants to try yeah. to handle the truth a little bit better. Speak and what's up. interesting about that too is, um, you know, the way I would look at it, where it would fall apart is we do have entitlements where people are not are disincentivized or not incentivized to work. Right. They're like, hey, we'll take care of your stuff. So I can see that being a little bit of a human. You know, there's a portion or percentage of the world that would say, well, I don't have to do anything. So why do anything? Exactly. And people now are realizing that they were able to make more money off of unemployment than they were actually being employed 
which uh, raises the question, why should we be employed when we can just have the banks print our money and helicopter money it to all of us? Well, what? how is the economy going to function if nobody's doing anything? Well, the simple answer is release all the technologies that can make everybody not be impoverished anymore. But as long as the cabal has some sort of a ball and chain around humanity, that's not happening. So we yeah. need to do what we can to get that cabal out of place. And it has been said by Alex Collier on a interview that he did on the goldfish report a couple months ago, he did say that the uh, Draco reptilian overlords on planet earth are no longer here. They have left. So whatever exists on the, of a cabal on earth, they do not have the luxury of having the bad guys uh, that, our higher ups uh, to that they answer to uh, come and save them in the event that some white hat is trying to um, expose their, their, their evil agenda anymore. It's not that easy anymore because the overlords have left. And a lot of our space brothers apparently have been helping us with that to a great extent. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster was a great um, X factor in regards to that regarding how the evidence to that that was definitely some sort of a staged event was overwhelming and it was designed to happen to um, uh, make humanity irate, become irradiated. So and did they use that? Did they use the tsunami as a cover up or a, or a shield or what's that called? Like a, a smoke screen then? Well, maybe it was, uh, yeah, a smoke screen or maybe even to uh, cause the, um, the problem itself it's been a while since the incident happened but there yeah was, uh, yeah but david Icke it's did do scary. an interview i think one of the reactors is still live and it still melts all the robotics of them trying to cover it up or something <laughs> yeah but the point is the ets basically realize that if we don't intervene and save humanity humanity is totally screwed from radiation at this point so we need to come in and help people and the pacific ocean had suffered a lot because of that i hope to see it's recovered a lot recently. Of course, the Pacific Ocean has another big problem regarding plastics. And I do want to encourage people to use the search engine oceanhero.today to, uh, for every five searches you do, apparently you generate enough money to uh, be able to get one piece of plastic out of the ocean. They explained how that works. And I, ever since I've realized that have been at my computer where I've listened to videos, I actually have typed the word love. That's my word of choice into the search engine and just keep pressing the um, circle refresh button over and over and over to keep the ticker on that um, <laughs> thing going. Because I'm Are you sure familiar that if with I keep... Boy on Slot by any chance? What? Are you familiar with Boy on Slot? He's a young gentleman who is is building the boats to get the plastic out of the ocean. Have you... Ever. I haven't heard that name, but um... I'll share the information with it. It's very interesting. He's, I think he's he's Nordic. I think he's Swedish. He might be Swiss or Finnish or something. Uh, I'll share the information with you. But he basically has these boats that kind of uh, straddle plastic, and then it sucks it up and pulls it out of the out of the ocean and rivers too. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, well, the search engine is my way of uh, trying to do that. And at a... absolutely, can you say it again? Can you share that dot today? Ocean yes. Ocean Hero dot today that's, thank you uh, that's the search engine just type any random word in there and whenever you're watching videos just keep pressing the refresh button to keep generating ad revenue for the site because they the more you do that the more the uh the more plastic can be taken out of the ocean and uh the better world we can create there is also another um website called ecosia dot org where for every um 45 searches i think you allow for them to plant a tree but i don't really think that's uh as important as getting the plastic out because nature can um refresh itself with uh, trees over the course of time rather than it can with plastic which tends to stay there for uh, long periods of time and of course the uh, ocean hero dot today um search engine you actually don't have to wait you can just keep uh right a few seconds after you refresh it and it keeps doing the ticker up to generate ad revenue the ecosia one it, i've discovered you actually have to wait like 30 seconds before it um allows for another search to um be able to to plant a tree so i mean use those two search engines but i would if i had choose between the two i would pick ocean hero dot today 
And of okay. course, at a local level, picking up litter is always a good thing. I've yeah. so every time I go around my neighborhood and I pick up all the cigarette butts and, and all the plastics <laughs> and I think of it as a for every little cigarette butt I'm picking up, I'm resolving a little bit of karma and yeah. doing a little bit of good thing for the earth. And I mean, unfortunately some of my neighbors are like really weird about it i mean i had one neighbor who was like get away from my driveway when i when i saw him i was just picking up your litter and another lady who uh who has a is at a curving point where so many cars drop by and drop off the litter i was walking on her driveway where her garbage bins were and dumping it and she was like why do you have to use my garbage bins to dispose of the garbage? Why can't you use someone else's? And uh. and like, come on, am I? Would you rather I just leave it all screwed <laughs> on the street? Give me a break. It's What's funny. the matter with people? It's funny because I I can pretty much imagine the exact neighborhood in which you are because I think we lived across the street from each other, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> well, you lived in Hun- you lived yeah. in Huntington Valley in the in Bucks County part that's on County Line Road area, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you're Huntington Lower Moreland or, or Upper Moreland or, or well, Huntington Valley actually, also. That's not the Lower Moreland. That's Bucks County. Yeah. Yeah. Huntington Valley is not a place. It's just a mailing address. Right. Picture. It's a bullshit thing. That's Yeah, it's in Montgomery County, though, right? It's in Montgomery Mont- and Bucks yeah. County. And because Bucks, it's, right. it's, yeah. it's a It's mailing address. It's a, right. Well, it's a strip mall uh, right there at Davisville Road. <laughs> yeah. And there's also another Huntington Valley shopping center down in the Abington area down Route 232. Um, so people ask, where is Huntington Valley? There is no Huntington Valley place. It's just there's a post just a office, post office. <laughs> designation. That, so it's really confusing. Although all of Lower Moreland is within the Huntington Valley. So and yes. some of Upper Moreland, some of Abington, some of um, Lower Southampton County as well. So yeah, technically uh, it would be Southampton. Uh, on my yeah. side. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so, sorry. It's just, it's just one of those things where it's funny because we, you know, you want to be open to people. It's like, how could someone say, please don't use my trash can to dispose of trash that was laying around? Like, yeah. that sounds so myopic. Yeah, it's so sad. I, but, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe these people, they they just wanted to be dicks for the sake of getting a good laugh out of it. That guy who was like, get away from my driveway. I can bet you maybe when he was driving away from the, uh, from the driveway, he was uh, snickering and saying, hey, see the look on that guy's face when I told him get away from my driveway. He, maybe he was just doing it for the fun of it, but still, that's not the way you should uh, treat people. And at this time of great awakening, you want right. to be very positive with people and be happy with people or who are doing good things like I do picking up litter and not diss them off like that. That's yeah, so, it, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I don't understand that. But <laughs> so we're at this point where we need to we need to get through this stuff. Right. So what are your thoughts on on the release of of the Pentagon statements and whatnot? Do you see a similar or does was the gentleman who saw the 2004 collapse in the other dimension? Does he have any thoughts about this dimension or what's happening here well andrew bartzis has tried to downplay the whole idea of nasara jasara rv currency reset and i think the reason he does that is because he fears that if he uh promotes it people are gonna sit on their couches and act like couch potatoes and do nothing and be apathetic and think come and save me and that's why he uh that David Icke also does the same thing for the for the same reason, and um, Andrew Bartz has also um, said light workers give you garbage um, when they say things like your your soul says that you're protected relative to other people. And well, um, some light worker actually told me when I was um, at a, a conference in Arizona, I check your soul, Andrew. You are protected. And I asked Andrew Bartz, what does that mean relative to other people? And he said that was just a light worker giving you garbage. Well, I think the reason he's downplaying it is because he doesn't want me to act like uh, a lazy bum. Not that I would, but that's his way of uh, giving people a nice kick in the pants. And um, of course, like I said, he has the luxury of charging people $500 for a hour long session to answer unverifiable questions. So, right. Uh, I mean, up to an Esther Hicks, uh, seminar down here and it's one of those same things it's you know it's uh, it's like you can't disprove a negative right it's you can't verify it you just have to know it or not know it kind of thing right and uh, but i 
uh, I no reason to believe he's faking. He's uh, there were some things in that Akashic Records session that he ex explained that well, <laughs> um, told me he really does have the ability to access the Akashic Records, and he is the number one source on my radio show. I've been meaning to actually send him an email. Um, I did send a message to his um, to some of his folks uh, saying, would he like to come on my show? And uh, they replied and said, what do you want to discuss? And I'm going to send another one saying, if the reason Andrew Bartos is not saying that he wants to come on my show is because he thinks that I'm going to ask questions that humanity is not prepared to hear the answer to, could you please tell me what those questions that you don't want me to ask are? And I promise you, I'm not going to ask them. I mean, that's the kind of host I am. I'm certainly going to I certainly would do that, but the Andrew Bartis did also say in my session with him, you are not meant to know the truth. And he wasn't just talking about me. He was talking about everybody. We yeah. are not meant to know the truth. We can't know everything. Even he can't know everything. The Akashic Records can answer a lot, but there is actually, uh, there does appear to be some sort of a limit in regards to the amount of um worlds and dimensions that he can um obtain information to and he said i don't know what that number is specifically but uh he said that there is a limit so and he there's a lot of work that he has to do to get the information himself so sometimes he actually asks people questions to get answers so he doesn't have to go through the trouble of um accessing the records himself i don't know what it's like what he has to do i not sure what the process is and it's one of those things you don't get it you don't know unless you're them right but i can only take his word for it that it really um it really is hard for him to to do that so, give so him a you had a reading with him yes i had a reading with him and how long ago was that if you don't mind me asking that was in december 2017 17 so, okay yeah and among other things i realized i was a. Uh, in an alternate timeline, I was a Philadelphia Philly when I didn't get cut <laughs> from my a baseball team in 10th grade. In Connie I... Macfield or where? <laughs> what? In Connie Macfield or at the vet or where? <laughs> well, uh, it's a uh, veteran. It, no, no, wait. This was would have been in 2002, I think it was. Um, so Citizens Bank I, at that point, I guess? Or, no, no. Yeah. Citizens Bank Park didn't exist. It was still Veterans yeah, it was, Stadium. It was still and, Veterans Stadium, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I would have... Uh, not been cut by my discriminatory baseball coach who cut me because apparently he thought I was too much of a distraction because all the other players like to have a lot of fun with me because I was the team clown and I didn't have a problem with that, but he had a problem with that. And he decided to cut me, even though I was the best player in spring training, which pissed off hmm. the assistant coaches, but I got cut. And well, it was actually brought to my attention after that when when I asked the baseball players how things have been going since I got cut from the team, I always heard something about to the extent of you should be glad you got cut because that guy you cut you, he's the worst coach ever. I actually wish I quit <laughs> earlier than. <laughs> so, uh, well, I would, if I hadn't gotten cut, I would have actually played well enough to play for the Phillies, which would have certainly gotten me enough so, money to make a living. And a World Series. Cause it would have been right around that time. Around 2008, yeah, and I have fond <laughs> memories of that time period in 2008 yeah, when uh, me too. when they won it, and uh, also the Eagles winning in 2017. That was uh, I don't Long know which time one coming was for the city, though. right? Yes, and uh, but the um, having to hear that I was a Philly on an alternate timeline, but I would think, would you want to do that? Would you rather have that than this life? Well, the downside, I would not be able to talk about the stuff that i'm talking about with you now because right. they, they, I mean, athletes are not allowed to talk about the stuff if they did they would uh lose their jobs i've got an uncle who's um a prominent i'm, I'm not going to give his name but he's a prominent member in the field of aeronautical engineering and he can't say anything about um 9-11 being an inside job and uh the planes actually being holograms on 9-11 they weren't real planes and all that's a provable fact with the scientific method and it's all a lie because if he did he would lose his job he has no choice but to play dumb and he's played dumb when i've tried to talk with him about the subject and i tell him well i'm sorry uncle you have no choice but to play dumb i feel your pain that's the price you pay for getting in uh getting involved with a system that pays you well but keeps you enslaved and same thing is true with my mother to some extent with her ophthalmology practice although my dear sweet mama she means more to me than anyone or anything the sun gazing experience i had that was um a story to remember my mother 
being an ophthalmologist, I knew that she was going to bitch at me for being a sun gazer. I knew that I was going to hear hear so much of it about how it was dangerous for my eyes. And I had heard that sun gazing, well, there was a lot of stories about it. Some people say you can do it with open eyes any time of day. Others say humanity is not prepared to do it any time of day. You should only do it open eyes during the first hour of sunrise and last hour of sunset. And any other time when the UV index is not at zero, you should do it with the closed eyes because, well, humanity is not ready for the intense energies of the sun. Then, well, I was um, doing it both times either way. I eventually started doing it closed eyes during the middle of the day. But either way, my mother was still hassling me so much about it. And she ended up suffering so much. She actually came up to me one day and said, Andrew, you have no idea how much I've suffered. I've lost weight. I've lost sleep. I'm wow. basically wasting away because of, of what you're doing. And that was too much for me to bear. I found myself praying for my mother and meditating outside my mother's window at one in the morning on nights, trying to heal her to the and asking my angels and guides to heal her with whatever they could do and whatever I could do to heal her. And uh, the day eventually came when I came up to her and told her that um, I suffered uh, myself seeing her suffer because, well, it's unavoidable that I'm going to suffer if she suffers because I told her you mean more to me than anyone or anything in this whole world. And at that moment, she put her arms around me, gave me the longest hug ever. <laughs> and it was an experience to remember, but it just goes to show you that some times in this matrix things are going to be set up in ways that's going to cause you to get hassled for trying to do things for your awakening in my case i had a ophthalmologist mother who was a sun gazer who <laughs> decided to let my habits make her miserable and yeah. i could not put up with it anymore to the point where i had to i well i i cut back on it and kept my eyes closed during the midday parts and she now seems to think it's um, safe to do during the during the time periods when the sunrise and sunset. You said yeah. kind of yes. yeah, yeah, makes sense exactly. because w w the sun actually dips below and the gravity of the Earth is pulling the light uh, for that last bit. You know how it kind of slowly sets and then all of a sudden kind of jumps because it kind of loses its cohesion with the light. It's that's a good place, good time to look. I would think. Yeah, well, the UV index is at zero. Right, that too. Sunrise and sunset, so that's why. I'm in Arizona, so the UV index is at 3,000, even like at midnight. So. <laughs> uh, well, um, actually, I think the UV index would be at zero during it the is. night. It was, and, it was a joke because Arizona yeah. is always so hot. <laughs> yes, although there are some people who have the ability to look at the sun with open eyes and not suffer any damage. Chief Golden Light Eagle and his tribes people, they look at the sun in the middle of the day during the summer solstice for crying out loud and i asked him how do you pull that off and not suffer damage to to our eyes and he said we're in the right state of mind and have enough control of our consciousness to not allow for it to to become damaged but unfortunately that's not the way it works when you have a collective consciousness of so many people believing that damage can be caused right. if you yeah and on a related note um my father i brought this up with him he had um neighbors who had a, his their um parents was a dentist the father was a dentist he wouldn't let his kids eat candy because he feared that they would get cavities but yet they always got cavities and right. why did that happen well the answer is the energy because of... the energy of him thinking mm -hmm. that my kids are going to get cavities and fearing it caused them to get cavities. Likewise, it stands to reason that some damage caused by sun gazing may not necessarily be caused by the sun. Well, maybe it is because we can't handle it, but it's also to some degree caused by people's collective consciousness thinking that person is going to hurt himself because he's staring at the sun. I fear for him. I worry about him. And just like a mother who worries about her kids getting the flu every winter and they get the flu every winter. But then when she envisions them being healthy throughout the winter, they don't get the flu. And I, right, the psychosomatic that. energy kind of portion of it. Yeah. So there, I'm wondering if it's evolutionary possibly for his tribes people too, if, if they always did that, if that was their nature perhaps evolutionary they have a little bit of more uv protection or something 
There could be. I don't know, but uh, just curious. I mean, obviously, we do have the mind over matter stuff. I'm not discounting that in any way. Uh, but yeah. just a thought. Just a thought. So, um, well, uh, any more uh, questions you got for me? Well, I look. I love that you came on to share. Uh, like I said, how we how we cross paths was so synchronous. I mean, I met a person in Arizona who did a radio show with you, and then he introduced me to you and we are neighbors. I mean, we live from the same zip code that doesn't even exist. I thought that was very synchronous. Uh, and yeah, it was very early in my, in my uh, understanding. It's also funny how, uh, when I went down to Arizona, I made, I've made several trips to Arizona in the past few years. Um, I did make a trip down to Arizona to do a peyote ceremony, but I never made it because I got pulled over by the cops and it didn't, it took a turn for the worse when I stood up for my rights. But um, interestingly, before that happened, I was in the um, bathroom at the airport and I heard some guy um, say to um, another guy, you look just like NFL football coach Dennis Green. And the guy said, I am Dennis Green. Dennis <laughs> Green was the guy who said they are who we thought they are. You may remember That's right. him. They yeah. who we thought they were, and we let him off the hook. That was I him, remember. and yeah, that was Dennis Green. I ran into him <laughs> at the um at Arizona, and uh, about a year later, I went back to Arizona, and I saw a man who looked like Daniel Teague at a conference that Tolik was running, and I said, "Anybody ever tell you you look like Daniel Teague?" And he said. I am Daniel T. <laughs> and then I told him, oh, well, you leave me no choice. I'm Andrew Fisher. How you doing? At last I get to meet you. And he was like, I thought Andrew Fisher was a 50-year-old man. I did, <laughs> he did not expect to see a man in his early 30s. What year was that? That, was, uh, that would have been in um, 2016, 2017. Okay. Uh, I, met Andrew, was- I met Daniel uh, probably 2016, 17 as well. Uh, 17, I think, was when I met him. Yeah, that was the conference where uh, Tolek got a lot of uh, beef for letting Stuart Swardlow come to the conference because Stuart Swardlow said a lot of um, fear porn and stuff that made a lot of people at the conference uncomfortable, which um, it's kind of interesting how when Stuart Swardlow gave uh, a talk at the um, Free Your Mind conference in the Philadelphia area um, on pretty much the same stuff, everybody at that conference, when he finished, dropped him to thunderous applause but at the Tolex conference, everybody seemed to get all upset and frustrated and and said, I don't want to come to this conference if you're going to let Stuart Swordlow and people like him back again. So wow. it bothers me that there's a change in um, consciousness in or thought or. Yes. Yeah. I do have a question about are you a MUFON guy at all? Yes. And okay. I, I cannot help but wonder what, what happened. What's going on? Yes. Uh, well, some one of the conferences have um, been switched. Uh, one of the conferences in the Langhorn area that I originally wanted to go to, but then I asked John Ventry, can I please uh, use my ticket for a future conference? Because I've gone to so many alien UFO conferences, I want to try something else. And he told me, that's okay, you can do that. But that conference ended up getting postponed to October of this year. And I don't even know if that one's going to get postponed as well. But yeah. the whole thing about MUFON now, there's the whole thing about one of MUFON's heads being arrested. Yeah, the executive for, director, right? Yeah, the executive director. was Is the executive director actually a child molester or are, were they set up and done nothing wrong? Because there was a whole John of God thing down in um, down South America where John of God was said to have run a, a pedophile ring. But allegedly, I, I've spoken to a lot of people who – who have gone down there. I've gone to some spiritual centers in this area, like the, the being one center and uh, circle miracles. And they talk with John of God and they've gone down there and they, they said, there's nothing of that sort that happens down there. So I'm thinking that John of God, he was definitely framed and he really did nothing wrong. And of course he's not the only one. We also had Kathleen Kane, the attorney general of Pennsylvania. She was um something about her, releasing information regarding the newspapers and covering it up and all. And well, she said she did nothing wrong. She was, she exposed information about how um, she had covered pedophiles within Pennsylvania's um, government. And she was going to blow the whistle on that. So they put her in jail to silence her. If only I had the chance to have her come on my show to expose that stuff. I'd certainly love to do that. 
Dave yeah. Champion, who wrote Income Tax, Shattering the Myths, he also uh, got um, booked on some uh, ridiculous charges that he didn't do because uh, he ran for sheriff and uh, they wanted to silence him because he was exposing all sorts of the bad the bad things of the bad guys. And of course, I myself did um, get 302'd, interestingly, um, back in late May. When what I is 302 if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, when uh, you, the police take you in and put you in a psych ward because they you feel like you're a danger to, to yourself, yourself and others. Yourself. Yeah. yeah, I had entities toying with my mind when I was walking down the street unexpectedly and I was doing things really out of whack and I was exp seeing synchronistic things happen like the cars and and like the birds flying by me and there was definitely something toying with them I knew something was up and somebody called the cops and the police had a uh, 302 to me and I ended up spending five days in a psych ward it's interesting how a couple days before that for whatever the reason I felt the urge to watch that scene from one flew over the cuckoo's nest where yeah. uh, Jack Nicholson chokes Nurse Ratched. Um, <laughs> so I think that was an omen of sorts saying you're going to yeah. be in a psych ward yourself in a few Precognitive, days. right? Yes. And uh, well, I got out of that and I did have Daniel Teague do a scan on me and he did find a uh, demonic cord on me and also found that some of my chakras were suppressed and also a lot of negative energies had been bombarded on my property in a large amount of time that never should have happened at the rate that he had uh, originally he had gotten rid of them and of course he can't get rid of them permanently they are going to come back but they came back at a rate yeah they do yeah but they came back at a much higher rate than he would have expected so i think they were definitely trying to well they double down man that's how it happens yeah. i've had cord cuts i've actually I, you know daniel and i uh had befriended each other and there's one day where i just felt this thing just like suction cup pop off my chest and I text him. I'm like, what's going on? He goes, Oh, I just cut a cord. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Tell me that shit before you do it. <laughs> you know, not faking. Yeah. No, oh, for real. I, I've firsthand experience. Like I come from science. I mean, I was not even aware of any ability or anything until I was 40. And my first vision was precognitive. It was of the shooting in South Carolina with Dylan Roof and uh, Clemens Pinkney. And I was blown away. I, I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, so then I went down the rabbit hole and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Although um, some people that I've utilized Daniel's abilities to, for, for the better, I've gone to some spiritual centers and, I've had him clear the places and I even had um, one place ban me because they said, you should have asked for permission to do this before um, having Daniel Teague uh, clear the energies. You are hereby banned forever. And mm. I, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And well, when I asked Daniel to scan that person, he found that that person who banned me had an entity hijack uh, her yeah. chakra system and uh, all our chakras. He corded so, and uh, what's the other yeah. thing? Corded and... Oh, I can't think of the other term he uses. Um, corrupted, I think, or yeah, something so like that. Right. Corrupted, I, but, yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting. And and to his point, I mean, he said that he doesn't require permission because it's not at the conscious level or the subconscious. It's below that even. So, you know, there's different theories within, even within the, the world. Exactly. And there is no privacy at the spiritual level. But then again, should we be allowed to have privacy on earth because nobody has authority over another person? Right. Well, it's a, it's an area where people agree to disagree on. It's a fine line because you've got the vessel and the occupant of the vessel, right? Which one, you know, which one really is the important one? Yes. So Edward Snowden releasing those documents, it's kind of a good thing because we needed something like that. To I agree. Show us that, everything is being watched and everything is being known. You, how else can you explain your consciousness if everything is not within one great big panopticon? But then yeah. again, the poorest people that are using it should not be using it for bad purposes. And they are using it for bad purposes. And those that don't want to fight it don't realize that. And that's where the problem is. And <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Well, well, like I said, I'm so grateful that you're with me. I have all day. You're welcome to share anything that you feel that you need to get out there. I, I'm I'm here because I'm a First Amendment person. I don't have to agree with you or believe in what you believe in to believe in you. 
as a person. So I am always here to allow you to express anything that you'd like, because that's this is your time. So if there is something you'd want to you know, share with people or something about yourself, I, I'm here all day. Well, the thing I would like to say is probably to my fellow Americans, the next few years are going to be, I'm sure they're going to be kind of tough because astrologically speaking, we got big things happening there. Pluto and Capricorn, which uh, Greg Prescott of N5D has talked about a lot, talked about everything that's not in humanity's best interest being um, suppressed and gotten rid of. Um, that's going to happen. That's going to end around the time period of um, April 2024 or so, which is uh, April 8th, 2024 is the day of that solar eclipse that's going to cross America, um, the opposite track of um, crisscross of the one that crossed America in 2017. Right. And yeah. um, it's interesting how the ast- astrology suggests that uh, this is similar to the eclipses that happened in the America prior to the American Revolution. There was a similar kind of um, eclipse happening like that with eclipses crossing America. Carbondale, Illinois is the crisscross point of those two eclipses, and I do intend to go there on April 8th, 2024, which will be the day after my 38th birthday, as a matter of fact. Awesome. And, uh, and uh, Well, it's I can... funny. I spoke with Anthony Pico about that. I had him on uh, of probably a, a probably a month ago or so. And he talked about the energies, the astrology of the 250 years. And that's when the revolution happened. 250 years from the revolution is 2026. So, you well, know, it's one of those six. That's um, uh, 20, uh, something about um, uh, one of the outer planets. Um, Uranus um, or Neptune is going to uh, 2026 is a prominent year in regards to um, spiritual change, I believe. Um, yeah in the second in my in my second house and i think 2026 is when that's going to change on neptune is um in the 12th my 12th house and i don't not sure when that's gonna change but it's probably going to be sometime after 2024 so this mid decade definitely big things but the year 2024 according to people like brad johnson who channels the dronus that's going to signal the end of the roman empire the modern era that is america and i asked my fellow americans please don't take this as a sign of come and save me. You can sit on your fat ass and do nothing. You need to do your part. We can speed this up. We can um, make it happen. Everything happens for a reason. It happens at it's the time it's supposed to happen. But for you to think I can just sit on my fat butt and do nothing, that's very unhealthy. You all need to do your part. I mean, if it's just sitting in a nature creek and meditating to spread love around the world, that's that's fine too. That's better than sitting on a couch and eating potato chips while watching some uh, – ridiculous sporting event that has no effect on the real world of course i can't deny that i like watching uh nfl football to get yeah uh, but indulging isn't a problem you know but to your point we we our our individual selves are responsible for our consciousness it is our individual responsibility to make sure that we contribute to the greater consciousness of all versus the inward right we want to look outward Absolutely. And I don't know what America is going to be in store for in regards to this um, time period. I mean, uh, and what Donald Trump, what he can do, what he can't do. It was uh, brought to my attention that when Donald Trump met Henry Kissinger in that meeting he had in May of 2017, for all intents and purposes, the reason that meeting was held was so Kissinger could tell Trump, you will do what my minions and I tell you to do or else you and your family will be dead. And if that's the case, that raises the question, to what extent is Donald Trump um, able to fight for the um, the Constitution and the American people without mm-hmm. having people like uh, Henry Kissinger and also Benjamin Netanyahu holding his leash? Because David Icke's Is Kofi Annan in, in there, too? Because he's a son of a gun, too. Who? Kofi Annan from UN back in the day, the oil for food scandal and the he's probably in there somewhere. Yeah. And of course, the, uh, but you know, uh, Kissinger is an interesting one. You know, I, it's really interesting. We had that, we had that election in 2016 and what was really eye opening about it, what I found refreshing, not getting political about the party, but it was a non-politician that got in there and I watched everyone shit their pants. I watched all Paul. I watched Paul Ryan get on his knees right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it stopped. And then you're like, gosh, darn it. We had there. It was right there. 
you know, to change, to really affect good change. Yes. And well, some people uh, think about Donald Trump. He's an enigma. I mean, he was born on the day of a, of an eclipse, which says he must have something great in store, but he's also connected to the Illuminati in the sense that yep. he's Hillary Clinton's 19th cousin. <laughs> I'm not making that up. He is Hillary Clinton's 19th cousin. They have some. Well, and look, he's in a picture in the background with Jeffrey Epstein. As, cl- as was Bill Clinton. So, you know, we've got two presidents who are, you know, directly linked to that, for example. And I don't want to get too deep into that, but that's very telling in some way, you know, not guilt by association, but come on, like, smells like a duck, right? <laughs> yeah, so join the dark side. No, no, don't join the dark side. I don't join the dark side, please. Don't join the dark side. Please join the... The light side and yeah, uh, good. How about don't be a dick to people? Can we just be nice? Can we just? <laughs> that's all we need. That's a yes. start, at least, right? And I would, if I see Donald, if I ever had the chance to meet Donald Trump in person, I would ask him, "Did Henry Kissinger threaten to kill you if you didn't do what he said? And if he did, you better tell him to shove it up his Zionist ass and cram his threats down his globalist throat and tell him where I'm not going to allow you for your." a global totalitarian government agenda to come to fruition. I am going to fight for fight for the common man and the common people and fight for the good of all. And well, if Trump does that, then well, that'll be good things for us. And I hope he does that. And will I ever see the day where I can actually ask Trump that question? Uh, I don't know, but good uh, luck. No. <laughs> it would catch him off guard if I did, but uh, yeah. yeah. So, so is there anything else you want to share? Could you please share all of your information, how we can get a hold of you, any other context that you would advise people who are more new into this, maybe like a, an introduction or a starter, you know, how they're starter people, right? You have to, you have to take the first step and some people can't jump right into where you're at, for example. So they have to kind of dip their toe in the water, then go, you know, ankle high, knee high and yes. deeper. Well, I have a Facebook group called Nature of Reality Radio, which you can join. I also up- upload all my uh, radio shows to blogger, natureofrealityradio.blogspot.com. And there is the YouTube channel, Nature of Reality Radio, where all my interviews that I have done since November of 2013 are up. And uh, I must give the human race a nice kick in the pants and say that don't uh, let the fact that many of my interviews are two hours long keep you from watching them. The information in those interviews is very, very important. And for those of you that have lousy attention spans and don't want to watch it because it's two hours long, shame on you. You're the reason why, one of the reasons why humanity is still asleep. So stop being part of the problem. Improve your attention span. Listen to people like I who do great things and sacrifice free time to wake people up and interview people and uh well hopefully i'll get a few uh more subscribers on it i'm also uploading all my interviews aside from youtube to cost.tv and over the past few days i've been in the process of trying to chop down the videos and trim them so that the uh, pre-show conversations and such isn't on them and i'm uploading to cost.tv as well but cost.tv which runs on a blockchain um, only allows for hour long interviews. So I have to um, do a lot of work on that to make sure that the interviews are cut in the right places and are no more than an hour. And they're um, parts one and part two. And so I encourage my listeners, um, you can listen to them on YouTube, but from, I uh, don't remember which interview was the first one, and maybe the one with um, uh, G. Edward Griffin or maybe the one before that, but. All my interviews from that onward have been uploaded to cost.tv. And I would ask that people, if they want to listen on YouTube, only listen for 15 seconds on YouTube. So I get a view count credit and then watch it on cost.tv so I can get blockchain monetary income. YouTube has demonetized me and I reapplied on Independence Day almost a month ago, and they still have not replied to me to say whether or not my channel is eligible for monetization. And frankly, I got to be. I hate to say this, but it probably won't be. Yeah, Um, because I expose too much. Uh, So, Funny thing about that. uh, I don't. Are you familiar with Google's uh, old mission statement? Don't be evil. Yeah, well, 
what does it say? I, I put that on my license plate. <laughs> don't be evil. Oh. Well, it's funny because that was their mission statement is don't be evil is do good things. And here they are demonetizing, shadow banning. I did. I actually had a conversation with a gentleman named Josh Pajinsky who wrote a, a do, or did a documentary called Don't Be Evil Google documentary back in 2017. I think he's still looking for funding to even get it exposed, you know, to get the the proper eyes on it. Um, the, you know, it should be a natural monopoly. These types of businesses, I I feel like the you know they they claim freedoms, but no, they they're agenda driven and it's unfortunate. Yeah, they're run by the Illuminati bloodlines to some degree. So yep, and the power. I mean, thirty percent of all global ad revenue, over thirty percent, is just Alphabet, is Google. I mean, it's they they have thirty plus percent of the global ad revenue on the internet. That is unbelievable. So anyway. <laughs> There's my uh, soapbox here. I'll give it back to you. <laughs> well, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I get on. Exactly. Here. So if anybody wants to message me, my email, fan of 2012 at gmail.com. That's F as in Frank, A is in America, N is in Nancy, O is another, F as in Frank, the number 2012 at gmail.com. I was a big mind calendar 2012 buff during that time period. I've decided to keep that as a username for almost all of my um platforms and such and uh i also like using teal swan's uh um, artwork as my avatars it's very very you'll see a picture of me personally out, out there on the internet uh, many people probably don't even know what i look like although i did upload that um uh radio show that i excuse me that video that i did with uh brian rose um of london real he's offering some program he it's no longer available now but he was allowing for people to upload some sort of a radio program or a, a video program where you can explain how you want to start a business and work with uh, london real and i made my own video saying that i would love to make uh nature of rowdy radio the next Infowars, and i'd like to be the next david ike basically and <laughs> well I don't, uh, I can only hope that he'll select me as one of the eight finalists to come to, to London in September if he wants to do that. Um, if I guess I wish I you luck, but it's not about luck. It's whatever it is. I wish you whatever works. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, if they, if there's not a COVID, coronavirus shutdown, um, COVID-19 shutdown, then how in the world are people going to be able to uh, travel to Europe if people um, aren't going to be allowed to travel, that's something that Brian Rose may need to take into account when he selects the people that he selects to win that contest, because I'm sure they're not all going to be from the UK. Yeah, but, it's uh, probably going to happen, unfortunately, in that respect. Right. So do you have any other maybe starter websites besides yourself, besides your website or anything that people... I, my my audience, I actually have two podcasts. One is the Knocked Conscious, and this is much more just serious based about the consciousness of people and trying to get along and the freedoms of, of us and, and our individual rights. The other one is called Beer Googles, and it's basically where we just get drunk and look up random stuff on the internet. So I've got a very wide audience. For people who watch more of the Beer Google stuff, what would be a good starting site for someone who hasn't even thought about being woken or enlightened yet uh well in <laughs> 5d or i mean what, what are yeah. some of the good sites well infowars.com is always good when it comes to getting out um news that's provable and very uh um pertinent although um of course alex jones has decided to move on from a lot of things that he focused on back in the day he's not going to talk about 9 11 obviously and he stopped drinking i think i think he he uh he's now uh, on the wagon hmm. yeah or he he's did, cut back he did get arrested for a dui even though his blood alcohol level was not above the legal limits so mm. i don't know yeah. how that worked out that was really really strange i'm sure they made up a distracted driving you know that one that caveat uh that caveat law is like, well, it's just reckless. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, of course, if you're not in commerce, then transportation laws don't apply to you. There's that video, what the government doesn't want you to know about your driver's yeah. license. I, I love spreading like wildfire on the internet like crazy. And uh, Eddie Craig of Rule Law Radio, a good friend of mine on Facebook, uh, listen to his show regularly. And uh, that was a fascinating presentation. And uh, lot, I'm sure a lot of people are too chicken to try that in front of the police, but those that are brave enough to try it good for you you have to stand up to tyranny and you have to be willing to sacrifice everything that may happen as a result of uh 
as a result of it happening. I mean, someone who says I can't afford to get arrested because I can't um, lose my job and all that. I say, no, you can't afford to get arrested. You can sell drugs and live off welfare if you get arrested and you can <laughs> use that money to make a living. And in the time it takes to sue the police, you can continue to make a living and you are, you should be ashamed of yourself for not wanting to do that. And they always say, well, that's not how things work in the real world. And I say, no, 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 no. How things work in the real world has nothing to do with the fact that you have the option of making your life more harder and complicated for yourself by standing up for your rights. And that's the kind of person that I choose to be. And well, all the other people that don't want to be like that, shame on you for wanting to be a slave and making every excuse that you can to, to want to be a slave. Yeah, the victim mentality is really unfortunate because if you are labeled or self-labeled yourself, you know, self-labeled as a victim, how could you possibly progress? You're just going to continuously internally say that you're being held down. You're being held back. You're not being given opportunity when there is opportunity out there. Exactly. And it's funny cuz there's one tip about the police that I have. I I remember uh something someone said to me is if they walk up to you after pulling you over and go, do you know how fast you are going? Ask them how fast you are going. Don't tell them because they will write it down and they will say that you're a law abiding citizen and they believe you. And whatever you said is going to be held against you. <laughs> I remember using that on the way to Vegas. I think I had when I got pulled over and go, do you know how fast you're going? I go, no officer. How fast was I going? And it, it you know, there's no, there's nothing he could stand on uh, in that case. Well, I, I use Eddie Craig's uh, traffic stop script, which he, uh, does it show on the uh in that presentation um people where's the presentation available if you don't mind me asking oh what the video the youtube video is called um what the government doesn't want you to know about your driver's license there was also called secrets police don't want you to know on the alex jones channel before that was taken down although there is a video um secrets police don't want you to know i think on the u.s chronicle youtube channel that is the eddie craig presentation but the government doesn't want you to know by driver license one is the one with the most views so that's the one that uh is worth uh getting out unfortunately for eddie he wanted to do a um tyranny alert kind of thing where um people could have access to some system where everybody who if they got um uh, hassled by the police or something you could do the tyranny alert to allow people to um, come and help you and save you and, and whatnot, but he wasn't making enough money to make that profitable. And um, on a related note, you got that police officer who um, made a video saying, officers, it's time for us to respect people's rights. If people don't want to um, um, give in to your tyranny and want to act like sovereign citizens, you better respect it. He was told by higher ups, get rid of that video. We're firing you. He didn't take down the video he got fired and he ended up making four hundred and thirty thousand dollars in a heartbeat by um saying that this happened to him on um the gofundme platform and um it's interesting how after i sent messages to him and some of his friends on that platform to say i suggest you donate some of your four hundred thirty thousand dollars to eddie craig so he can get his um Texas lawsuit that he wants to do to shut down the transportation system because Eddie would need $25,000 for that in Texas um, to get shut down. Um, and he's only gotten like 2000 for that. If you guys have more than enough money to throw a monkey wrench in the system, it's not like you're going to know what to do with, with all the money that you've made. Right. You, if you want to, could you at the very least consider donating? And it was only a couple of days after I sent that message out to them that I got 302'd with the entities uh-huh. toying with my mind. So I can't help but wonder if that played a role in it. And it's also interesting how if I hadn't gotten 302'd, I was uh, set up to have a, in a conference conference call session with Benjamin Netanyahu's son, who I think is actually living in Cheltenham Township, who's ben, Benjamin Netanyahu graduated Cheltenham High School. It's KI, uh, we I was worked at a catering company uh, in in the Philadelphia area, and I think we met Netanyahu at uh, KI, which is one of the synagogues in the area. Yeah, and uh, his son was going to be on a um, on some platform and. 
I originally submitted the question of what do you think you can do to make the Jewish religion become more popular, given that it's one of the least popular among the major religions. That was not the question I was going to ask. What I was actually going to ask was, does it seriously not disturb you that your father is a puppet to Henry Kissinger and the Zionist minions who work for him, who see global totalitarian government and are holding Trump's leash and want to impose tyranny upon the rest of the world to impose global domination and his slave humanity. Can you imagine how much of a turn for the worse <laughs> the conference would have taken if I had the opportunity to ask that? Well, I didn't get to ask that because I was three or two by the police and put in a psych yeah. ward. And of course, just two days after I sent a Maybe message. That was a preemptive me. strike. Maybe that was the reason they did it because they, they thought of your intentions possibly. Yes. So can only imagine what would have happened, but <laughs> I don't know. But I put myself out there. I ended up getting the price paid for it in yeah, the end i'm sure it'll you. all work out thank you for your boldness because i you know i'm one i'm i'm one to be bold as well and with that comes a high responsibility of finding the the data or evidence to back up your claims and i'm certain that over time you've had a thought and it's been changed by compelling evidence and vice versa right, right. so thank you for being bold because without the boldness we can't look at a problem uh, there's an old Native American saying that is, you can't wake someone who's pretending to be sleeping. And that's what I feel like we're at. Like everyone's so allowing themselves to be distracted by soccer practice or, you know, uh, picking up the kids or doing dinner or, or work or this, that, and the other. And they just, they're distracted. They, they, they aren't able to see this stuff. Well said. So... Is there any final words before we call it a day? I, I'm so grateful. First of all, thank you for joining me and sharing yourself so openly because that's that's what this podcast is about. Is about I have you're going to hear a lot of weird weird things out. Like this isn't weird. It's only weird in comparison to what what, you know, what we consider quote unquote normal. But different concepts. I I want everyone to express those. So thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. And my last advice is realize your infinite consciousness, realize that your soul is your Godhead and you will prosper and the universe will be out to help you. No matter what hardships may come through free will interference, you will have the universe and your guardian angels and spirit guides by your side if you keep it positive. Beautiful. Right. Uh, it couldn't have been better said my, uh, myself. Could you just provide your information, your data one more time before we call it a day and, and we're one good to time. go? Okay, Nature of Reality Radio is the name of the YouTube channel. Include the word radio, Nature of Reality Radio. There's also the Facebook group, Nature of Reality Radio. And um, I have natureofrealityradio.blogspot.com where all my videos are archived. No website per se, just a blogspot archive for the shows to be uploaded. And if anybody wants to reach out to me, fan of 2012 at gmail.com is my email so that's in a nutshell and uh i guess i'll uh enjoy the rest of the day out in nature <laughs> please do thank you so much for joining us and if you could do me a favor if you send me an email with your links i'll happily put them in the notes at the uh, description of the of the show uh links of my show the links oh, my of your radio show your blog spot and everything well i'll happily post those for you all right. And I guess I'm allowed to upload this to my channel too. Absolutely. Please do. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of those. I'm holding on to this stuff. This is ours. This is the world's right. This is the universe's. Yes. Um, this is not for any single entity to hold. It's to be shared. Exactly. So you so, have a verbal commitment that you can use this however you wish in your. In well, your... actually, hey, I know it's recorded, but is it recorded at your end and my end or your end? It, I believe it's. I believe it's mine. What I'm going to do is I. It, it makes two tracks, so you know, and then I combine them, and I I can certainly Dropbox it to you, or or I can share my Dropbox link because it it records my Dropbox link as well. Well, just so I whatever can share you get, whatever can yeah. give me. Absolutely, we're going to share it that way for sure. Let's do it that way. All Andrew, right. thank you so much again. Very well. uh, once once again, this has been knocked conscious, and we've we've had a little time with Andrew Fisher. Um, please heed his words. Andrew is is not the typical person like like you might consider yourself. He has this breadth and width to his thought process, and you don't need to agree with him. But please listen. I mean, please 
listen, take the information, and then make up your own mind. Is that a is that a good way to do that, Andrew? Definitely use discernment. Please, thank you so much again. And uh, not conscious people, we will catch you guys on a later episode. Thank you so much, Andrew. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>